name's Darlene, and I have Parkinson's. We're going to have a come by and have coffee with me today. Just drop on in. I sure wish you could all come over for a cup of coffee because it gets pretty boring here sometimes. But we can't get together that way, but we can get together this way. And that's as good as anything, I think. So anyway, there isn't a lot happening today. It's going to be a nice quiet day, uh, which is a good thing because partied last night. <laughs> um, it was our social club and downstairs and we had a lovely ham dinner and uh, there was some great music and you know I, I blend in when there's good music because everybody else is moving as well as me <laughs> so I sort of blend in with that. I don't blend in them so much during the meal time but you know the other part I do. I, I mind you I came upstairs early. Uh, Bill stayed down a little bit longer than I did and um, I don't know whether he asked to bring up a second plate up or whether it was offered to him to bring a second plate up. But anyway, he ate, if you can believe this, he ate two plates of food while he was there because you were allowed to go up for seconds. And he did. It was ham and scalloped potatoes. Oh my gosh, for those potatoes, lovely. Well, it was all lovely. But anyway, he, he went up for a second plate of dinner. And when he came upstairs, he had a plate of food as well. And he said, it's breakfast. <laughs> I said to him, I said, oh my gosh, go no. like, Good heavens, you've taken far more than your share. <laughs> but anyway, it was a lovely meal, and we had a great time. Um, and he likes socializing. I'm not so much a socializer, as you all know. I'm not a great socializer, but I, I love going down, and the people are so friendly there. So anyway, we went down and did that last night, and um, Claudine is going to exchange one of the dresses that I bought because it, it's just too big, and actually one of the blouses as well. Um, I bought things that were still too big for me because I, I'm not used to what size I am. So anyway, the other things that I've got, I'm going to just keep um, and wear. And like I said, I'm going to exchange uh, them in, in the fall when I'm looking for a winter wardrobe. By then I should know whether my weight has settled in or not. So I'm going to just wait and see how that goes. But I'm... Um, Tomorrow is Sunday. Monday, I have an appointment with um, the nurse fellow who is running the program or, or is administering the program for this pump for to give your uh, medication with. So we'll find out then a little bit more information about it, whether I'm even a candidate for it or not. Um, it would be nice if I could have a level dose of my medication. If that's what it does, that would be really nice because maybe I wouldn't have that really on and off periods. Maybe I'd just have sort of a, a more even keel. I'm not sure. But uh, the other thing is I'm starting to kind of make mistakes with my medicine. I forget some doses and I take too many at other times. And, you know, I try really hard not to, but sometimes, and I have trouble because of my hands, I have trouble even putting the pills into the little containers and whatnot. So, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those things that will probably be helpful to me in the long run if if I qualify or if it's not too expensive like I don't know uh I I have blue cross but some things you have to pay for and some things you don't have to pay for so when I was on the patch the low dose patch I had to pay for then when I went up to the the second milligram it was going to be covered so but now I, I don't take the patch now I'm quite grateful for being off of that patch because it caused terrible side effects for me. Um, now let's see what else is going on in my life. Um, hmm. Oh, I'm going to tell you a story and then maybe I'll think of something else. I, I don't have a very exciting life, but you know, I'll think of something else while I tell you a story. When I was uh, first moved back to Canada, I, I was gone for five years. Uh, when I first moved back to Canada, um, after I had left my first husband, I came back and I got an apartment up close to where mom and dad were. And it, we, I was quite happy settling in there, but I needed to find work. And where my dad worked, he said, they're always hiring in the warehouse, Darlene. And he says, I know it's not, you know, a, a female's job. But and I said, I don't care what I do. I said, it doesn't matter to me. It's good money. So anyway, I went to work in the warehouse. He set me up an interview with the guy who ran the warehouse and my dad was pretty high up in the country company, so I, I knew that I wasn't going to have a problem unless unless I did something to really mess up. So anyway, he, he hired me, 
And I went to work in the warehouse. They, they taught me how to drive a forklift and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I, I quite liked the job. But anyway, so we were there. But dad it was an old-fashioned man. And there was jobs for women and there was jobs for men. And he knew that this was not a job for a woman, which didn't bother me, but it bothered him. So anyway, to do the job, I had to be a member of the Marine and Boilermakers. That was the union that was in there. So I, I did that. And then they only had two washrooms in the warehouse area. And of course, all men were there. So they, they had two men's washrooms. And so when I came to work, they put a W.O. in front of one of the men's washrooms and that there was supposed to be my washroom. Well, the problem being is there was all these men lined up to go to the washroom and me, the only person having to use the other one, I thought that was just ridiculous. So anyway, I talked to Mitzi out in the office and I said to her, I said, listen, if you guys don't mind, I said, they can have their bathroom back there. I said, I'll just come through here and, you know, use this one. She said, that would be fine. She said, that would have really solve some problems. And I said, well, that's what we'll do. So that, that problem was solved and we were carrying on. And then dad still sort of was like, he, he didn't really want to own up to the, the, the girl in the warehouse was his daughter. I mean, everybody knew that, but not guests or big wigs from other companies or, you know, cause dad worked in the office area. You know, he was, he was dressed in a suit, whereas I was dressed in overalls. Anywho, we, uh, <laughs> he was coming through with some great big wig from, uh, Malaysia. I think he was, he was, um, the, uh, the company that had bought over the, we, I worked for Pacific Truck and Trailer and this was uh, the company that had bought Pacific Truck and Trailer out. And, uh, they built, Pacific built these off-road vehicles, like big trucks and specialty jobs and whatnot. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm getting off topic. Um, he was bringing this fellow through the, the area. Well, I guess over in the country this man was from, they have people named dukes and earls and lords and dames and, you know, you, you name it. And so when dad came around to me, of course, I had a different last name than what he had. So he said that he knew this man wouldn't know that I was his daughter because when he introduced me, I didn't have the same name as him. So anyway, he introduced me and he said, Darlene, I'd like to introduce you to, to Lord Stud. And I looked at him and I thought, he cannot be serious. Lord Stud? Like, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I started to laugh. And, you know, like for me, it was a joke. Like I thought, I thought dad was pulling a prank on me, right? He, the face that he went, I always knew when my dad was mad, his lip went white, totally white. He, he pursed his lips together and he just got all white. And I saw the white coming and I thought, Oh, I really put my foot in it this time, right? You know, but the guy, he just laughed with me and he says, I know he says, this. he says, when you're a stud, you're a stud. <laughs> and then he left it at that. But I was, I was mortified. I could just see I was going to be, in, I was going to be in big trouble with dad. But anyway, one other time that I stepped my foot in it, I didn't have my car that day. So I was going to get a ride home with my dad. So I walked over to the, where his car was and I was just waiting out by the car till he would come off work and because I got off before he did and of course he had to stay to the bitter end and whatnot so he came out well he came out with somebody that had been in the office and they were talking and whatnot and this man says to dad where would be a good place to eat and I knew my dad didn't have a clue this the, the company was like a, a long distance from our house and he never was over in that area other than you know going to work and I thought, he has no idea what restaurants are over here or anything. And I happen to have known of a very good restaurant. And it was called the Tomahawk Grill. And the Tomahawk Grill was uh, owned by the Indians on the reserve, but they served the best food. And the atmosphere in there was just really tickety-boo. So anyway, I spoke up thinking I was going to be helpful. And I said, you know, if you like to have like breakfast for dinner, I said, the Tomahawk Grill has excellent food. Well, again, the white lip showed. Dad says, no, no, no. He says, you go down the seven seas. He said, that it's very nice down at the seven seas. Well, I thought, good heavens, like, what is it? Are these people uppity ups or something, you know? But anyway, I didn't say anything more and got in the car. 
And dad says to me, when businessmen are on an expense account, they do not eat at a grill. <laughs> I, like, I said, well, I know you like breakfast for dinner. Well, the joke of the whole thing was we went home and what did mom have cooked for dinner? Breakfast. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But anyway, I learned right quick. I should keep my mouth closed when the big wigs are around because I I cannot be I can't be hoities. I can't. I, I just it's not in me. I I I don't mix well with that crowd. <laughs> I tried. I tried, I tried, and I just don't mix well. I'm too me. <laughs> so anyway, so that's my story. I don't really have too much exciting to tell you other than I had such fun time last night. And, uh, oh, I, I've decided what I'm doing for Try It Thursday. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm going to try it for Thursday. So you'll have to stay tuned for Try It Thursday because I don't think I'm going to succeed, but I might. I might. I'm practicing. All right. I'm going to say goodbye for now. And I don't think I have any pictures to add at the end here. No, I don't think I do. So anyway, I'm just going to say goodbye for now, and I'll see you all tomorrow.